Hey guys, welcome to today's live stream. Today is July 31st, 2019. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop and I am gonna show you how you can turn your cross stitch into a bag today, which is super, super exciting. But first I wanna give you a Jolly July update. So the first one is, this is my very first piece that was stitched for Jolly July last week. So that's a whip. And then this is a finish. And this ho 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 is from Christmas cheer. So you can see I changed the colors. And the first one is from Country Cottage Needleworks. And then my next ones are my sleds. So these are sleds that we bought, they're brown and we spray painted them white and then we painted the wood part with Lori Holt's picket fence paint. And I'm using this pattern, sleds A to Z. And so I've got K for Kevin, K, K for Kimberly, E for Emma, P for Peyton, W for Will, and then we're gonna do a C for Christopher and another P for Piggy because everyone thinks I need another P for Piggy, which is awesome. And then we've got a couple of finishes. This is 25th and Jingle, which is from the same pattern that we had before. And we have Snow Love. All we have to do is add our French or Colonial Knots. So we are just moving right along. And next week, we're gonna give you this really big update of all of our Jolly July and everything we got done. And we'll even have more finishes next week. So that's super exciting. I've loved everything that all of you guys have been stitching. And now we're gonna make a bag. So we're gonna just mix quilting and cross stitching into one. And I wanna give a big shout out to Priscilla Blaine because she's the one who gave me this idea to come up with a bag. So I'm gonna go step by step on what to do. We're gonna have a free pattern that is gonna be attached to the video in a couple of minutes. And that is gonna tell you how to make the front and the back. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips for the front. If you use 14 count for the eat sleep stitch, a six and a half inch square will end up really nice on the front of your bag. So my tip would be use a six and a half inch square ruler and then use a friction pin to draw a line around the edge. Take it off, make sure you like the placement then cut. A friction pin will disappear with heat later, but I would suggest drawing that line, pulling it off, making sure you like it, really taking time to trim yours. So that would be my tip. And then in your pattern, it's going to give you the size of the rectangles to add to the side, the size of the rectangles to add to the top, and then you'll have your front. And the back, you could just use one fabric if, you, if you're not into quilting or you don't know how to really piece too much. But we did a fun back, it's a free pattern, and it gives you all of your cutting on your pattern. And now I'm gonna show you how you can put this together. So remember, if you are not great at piecing, just do the front and just use a solid piece for the back. So we're gonna start, this is our front piece. What you'll do is take, there's a product called Soft and Stable by By Annie. It's great, it's sturdy, it's firm. I use it for any bags or table runners. I never use batting for bags. I always use Soft and Stable. Now, if you made your bag black, like with chalkboard black, there is a black By Annie's because you're not gonna wanna put white behind black. So what you do, is you take your front piece that I just showed you from your pattern and you just quilt it down. And you can see that we just quilted a tiny bit. So you make one piece. For your back, you make your quilted piece and you quilt it down and we just have a couple of lines. You don't need a lot of quilting, so that's really easy. So you've got your two pieces. These are about eight, eight and a half inches. And then the inside, 
your lining, you will need two pieces the same size as the front. So you've got four pieces. So Lily, is that making sense so yes, far? It is. Okay, so you've got your pattern to make your cross stitch. That's a paid pattern by Lori Holt. She's the designer. You add the fabrics to the side with our free pattern. You make the back. You quilt the front and the back only. And then you cut two lining pieces. The lining pieces is what is gonna be on the inside of your bag. So you've got that. Your next step is I'm gonna put these three aside. We're gonna make our zipper. So I'm using a Buy Annie zipper. This is the smallest size that she has. And I'm going to just do this. I'm going to mark a quarter inch in on both sides of my bag, the front. And that is the size that we need our zipper to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is trim the zipper on one side. This is a nylon zipper. You can't do this with a metal zipper. You're gonna go down, pull your zipper tab down. If you don't pull your zipper tab down, you won't have a zipper pull or your zipper pull. You're gonna go to this end and you want it to be the same size that we've drawn. So I'm just gonna draw. Your zipper's here, your zipper pull and we're gonna cut. And with by Annie, you can buy more zipper pulls and then use the rest of this. You don't have to throw this away. You can add zipper pulls and keep using this. So I'll set this aside. So now what we need to do is we're gonna add some, some little pulls on the, some little tabs at the end so that it encloses and makes it pretty. So if you look at this bag, you see I've got white at the end it just makes it really clean on the top. So you're gonna take two pieces that are one and a half by two. You're gonna fold them in, press, and then fold them in twice more. And fold over. And what that's gonna do is give you this little tab right here and we're gonna stitch that down. So I'm gonna use some Wonder Clips and we're just gonna, I'm gonna stitch on top of that and it just gives your zipper a really nice finish. I'm gonna just start, let's see. So now you've got, that's how that looks. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Put that in here. And then we're gonna stitch this down. That's just gonna hold your zipper all into place. And I'm just stitching right on the edge. And I made my stitches a little bit longer so that they're not too tight. So that is looking a little funny. So I didn't do that right. So we're gonna, we're going to redo this end. Basically, I didn't, I didn't get it on good enough. So I have another one over here I'm gonna use instead. So 
So pins would probably be better for this to keep it in place. Now that looks great. So we're gonna just trim off these ends. I just made it a little bit wider. So we've got our pool and that's gonna go right here. So now we can start putting our bag together. You're gonna take the front of your bag face up Make sure I'm doing this right. You're gonna put your zipper face down. Now here, if you're right-handed, you want your zipper tab on the right. If you're left-handed, you might want it on the left. So I'm gonna have it on the right, face down. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of pins in. Since that just happened at home, I didn't have to put pins in. And you'll notice that we're still following these lines that I put here because you don't want this to go all the way to the edge. And then you're gonna take one of your linings and that is going to go face down. I have some notes over here so I don't mess up. So that is gonna be face up, face down, face down. Okay, we're gonna stitch all the way across the top. And I've got my little zipper pull right here. So when we get to my zipper pull, I'm gonna show you what to do. And I'm just using like a quarter inch seam with by Annie. It has a really big tab. So you can go, and I'm just gonna use the lines on my machine, and I'm gonna go a quarter inch seam all the way across, and when I get to my zipper pool, I'm gonna show you what I do. So. Okay, my needle's down. I'm gonna pull my tab down and I'm gonna keep going, and then that way you don't have a bubble. So this is what it's looking like now. And we're gonna pull this to the back and press. This would be one nice piece. And your by Annie's pretty thick, thicker than batting, so we're gonna really press this down and we're gonna do a top stitch across and that's gonna keep it down. When I do the top stitch, I'm going to use like a 3.0 stitch length so it's really nice and not too cramped up because it's you've got a lot of layers. And I'm just stitching right on that edge, like an eighth of an inch in. I'm just eyeballing it. And I have a little foot that's kind of open. So, can you see now? So now you can see I've got this top stitch. It looks great. So now we're gonna add the back. So we're gonna leave this face up. I gotta look at my notes. I got a little cheat sheet. Um, so this is, right side up we're gonna put our back 
right side down. So I think it'll look better this way. So then we're gonna do right side down on the zipper. So we're gonna be off the zipper part. And then we're gonna put this part down. So this is how it will look. These two are right sides together and then the lining, the last lining is down. And we're going to also pin. At home, I really don't have to pin at all. I just use my Wonder Clips when I'm doing bags, but since we're on camera, I tend to mess up. So I'm gonna use pins just so that I don't mess up. Okay, and then you're gonna see that I've kept this zipper piece a quarter inch in. And we're just gonna go across the top, the same as we did before, which I'm just doing a quarter inch. You could do half inch if you wanted, if you wanted less zipper showing. So we're gonna go across. When I get to that pull again, I'm gonna pull it back down so it doesn't leave a lump. And I don't think my seam was very straight, so I'm gonna do it one more time. And I do that a lot with bags because I'm not used to going through that many layers, but I want it to be pretty, so. And it's not my bag, so it's gotta be nice when I finish it. I can mess up mine, but I don't wanna mess up somebody else's. Okay. So now, I did something wrong. Oh no. Yeah, something's not right. Yeah, something's not right. Nope. Totally did that wrong. I don't know what I did wrong though. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I have no idea what I did. So, see, this is why we should not do bags live because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to try to figure out what I did, but did not do this. This is not right. So, okay, so does anybody have questions so far with what we have done that I can go back and answer while I rip this out? Well, a few people are, are suggesting that maybe the lining was uh, the was supposed to be on top. Lining wrong side is. Um, Michelle Har Hardy was saying she hasn't added a zipper pull to leftover zipper lengths, and she was hoping to see an example of that sometime. Sure, we can do that on our quilting on our quilting channel. And. Uh, Oh, Tina Steiben had a tip. She said, I sew the ends of the zipper together first uh, without the little strips. Then I take the strip and sew again. That way does, the zipper doesn't slip away. Uh, Lori Holt was asking, well, first she said, looking good, Kimberly. And then she asked, does this cute little bag fit inside the bigger bag that you made earlier? It does. And then we had a few people asking about the iron. Do you want to go ahead and answer the iron, Lily? You know the answer, so I can get this out. Okay. Just like a sponsored insert or something. Um, no, that's the Panasonic 360 cordless iron. Um, Comes in a couple colors. Yeah, we have a few colors. I believe links are in the description for that. Um, yeah, it's a good little iron. Uh, my it's mom loves retreats. it. Yeah, it's good for retreats. It's small. And uh, you just have to like let it sit and recharge, then you can like take it off and go crazy. Okay. Um, Megan Cooper was asking, what foot are you using on the machine? So I just have like a little open foot. I can take it off at the end and show. So now we gotta figure out what we did because I have no idea what I did wrong. So this, this is what I did at home. So we've got this. Oh, that's why. The back first, the top second. And the, 
and then this down. Okay, we're gonna try that. Eight. I don't know if it's gonna work. That, that looks right to me. I have no idea, guys. This is why I'm telling you that like at home, it's okay if you mess up because this bag took me three and a half hours to make. And I mess up all the time, especially when I'm doing bags. So you can just laugh because, let's see. Okay, now I'm gonna move this in a little bit better. So all my pinning didn't really matter because I had to redo it. But this is totally what happens. And we're gonna do this one more time and see. Everyone's saying that they think that's right. Okay, I hope so. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, it worked. Oh, thank goodness. Yay, confetti thank goodness for Denise's bag, because I was about to mess it up. <laughs> and then she's not going to be my friend. Oh. Let's see, okay. So, but that's what... Um, I keep stuff like this in my sewing room all the time because I mess up all the time and that's why I keep photos. I keep a lot of photos. Most of this I would just go by my phone and I do that with quilting too. Okay, so now it's looking good. Thank goodness I was able to figure it out. Okay, now I'm going to press this down again and you just want to press, press it nice and flat. And I'm gonna go over the top and just do a top stitch and I'll just start and once I get to the zipper pull I'll move it back oh my goodness I'm so excited that I did that but good thing I fixed it <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen and I even studied so that's what I get I failed I get a B for today okay I'm gonna go across So now we're going to leave our zipper open. If you don't leave it open at this point, we're not going to be able to turn the bag out. Now we're going to go like this. So this is what you have right now. You have your front, your back, and your two linings. Looks really nice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our linings touch and our front and bag touch. And this is where I messed up at home this weekend. So I made the whole thing and then I was like, oh, that's totally wrong, I had to pull it all out. So I'm gonna get that right on camera. <laughs> okay, so here what I'm gonna do is, you're gonna kinda scrunch this zipper part down. So you're just kinda squeezing that together and you're going to, as much as you can, Kind of push that down so you don't st you don't want to stitch over that little zipper part and we're going to go around the bag at the bottom on the lining we're going to leave an opening i just eyeball the opening but you need a little bit of an opening because if you don't have an opening the bag is pretty thick because of the by annie so you need a little bit bigger opening so you can really pull that through So here we go. And right here, it's not perfectly straight right here. So I'm going to just cut that so that it's straight because it's the inside of your bag. So it really doesn't even matter but I, I want to be able to make my seams. So I'm going to make that match. So I'm just matching. And then on this side, all I need is, I just need some wonder clips. 
and I'm going to want a tighter stitch here because at home when I did this and I did a little bit of a looser stitch, you could see your stitches when you pulled it out. So I'm going to lower my stitch length to probably a two. And I'm going to go around and I'm just going to start, I'll probably start right here. I'm going to do a little bit, I'll probably do a three eighths of an inch stitch. So we're going to just go around and I'm going to, well actually I'll just start at the bottom because that's the opening. So at this part I'm going to leave an opening. I'm going to go ahead and do half an inch. That'll make it easy because I can see the half inch on my machine. When I start and stop, I'm going to backstitch. So I'll start. When I get to about half an inch away, I'm going to pivot. And when you pivot, you want, so I need to do one more stitch. When you turn, you want it to just line up on your, I'm just using the guide. I usually use clearly perfect angle, but I don't have the bed on it today because we didn't have enough space. So I'm just doing half an inch. You can do a quarter inch. I'm just not great at making that accurate. So I'd rather do half an inch. And then when you get to this little part where the tab is, go into half a in, quarter inch, actually. And then I'm gonna do a quarter inch on the front. Yeah, so I'll, really you should be doing a quarter inch. So yeah, do a quarter inch. Don't listen to me. But yeah, I'm doing a half inch on the inside because my one at home kind of, when you look at it, it's a little bulky. So a little bit extra on the inside. So Okay, so now I'm gonna peek inside. I'm gonna leave my hole very big. I'm gonna make my hole a little bit bigger. Same thing I did this weekend. You forget how bulky it is. And the, can you clarify what seam allowance they should use? Quarter for inch. Quarter inch, okay. Don't, yeah, just do a quarter inch, don't. This is why I should do bags, not live, because I don't know what I'm doing. That's okay. I just don't do bags as often. Let's see, so I'm gonna kinda look and make sure that that looks really nice, that I haven't sewn over my tab, and I haven't. I'm gonna kinda look in this corner, make sure it looks clean, it looks nice and clean. I'm gonna do a couple more stitches around here, just to really make it, there's a lot of bulk here, and I don't want that to come out later. So I, it looks nice, so I'm gonna go over the stitches one more time, just a little bit tighter so it doesn't come out. Okay, so now we're gonna pull the bag out. So to pull the bag out, you just put your hand in. Oh, before I do that, I am gonna clip my corners I'm going to just do a triangle and also you can do a little bit off of that triangle so you can just cut around that edge. Okay. 
You can do that on the inside too. I don't, on the inside, you're not gonna really see it. I'll just pull. I just go to the very corner and just kind of tuck it in and pull it out. And you can see if your zipper wasn't unzipped, you wouldn't be able to do this. And I'm gonna, I just use my finger to poke out. If it doesn't work, I use a friction pen. I don't use the pointers or the purple thing because when I do, I poke through my fabric. I can't be trusted with those things. So I just do that, pull this, and then you wanna push this out. And you don't have to do the zipper tab. You could leave that off if you wanted to. I just think it makes it pretty. And there's your bag. So now what I'll do is just pull these out with my finger. And then I'm just gonna tuck this under. And then we're gonna sew this closed with the machine. And what I like to do is just make sure, nobody is gonna see this. I'm not gonna hand stitch this. So to make it look nice and clean, I'm just gonna do a little stitch right here all the way across the bottom so it looks nice and even. Right on the edge. Looks nice. You don't even see those stitches. Cut any threads off. Sorry, I'm a little OCD. And then you just push your push your lining inside, and you zip your bag. And you can press it a little bit. And we did it so yeah so have fun and i can't wait to see what you guys did um denise wanted hers a little bit smaller so she adjusted the pattern and that's what i always am trying to tell you guys is like if you want it a little bit skinnier make it a little bit skinnier you can change it do it however you want use whatever fabric like she used a purple zipper i used a white um do it however you like but i hope yeah so this will fit in my other bag and and so let's answer questions on this and then I can go from there and show you all the new stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm going to clean up. Okay. Uh, Julie Washburn says, I make a lot of zipper bags and I thought I wasn't supposed to put the iron on the zipper. So is it okay to do that? Uh, just not let it sit there for a length of time? Oh, I put it on the zipper all the time. I have no idea. But I, these are nylon zippers. You can... Okay, so I only use by any zippers. And one of the reasons I use her product is because you can cut it and it's very forgiving. It has a wide, I don't remember what you call this, but it's wide. So you're not having to like scrimp on your stitches. You can iron on it, you can cut it. And this is the foot I was using. So I'm gonna put that there for if, um, it's just a foot that came with my machine, I think. It just has a little opening. Let me see. It has like a little opening so I can see where I'm stitching. I have no idea what it's called. It was just a standard foot that came with my machine. And I feel bad because now I realize that Denise is left-handed, so I put her zipper in wrong. Well, there, there was a debate in the comments about oh, okay. which side you should put it on. And I think a lot of people said that it should be like the opposite of your handedness. Okay, so well, I have right. hers right and mine wrong, but I actually like mine. I like mine on the right. Yeah, I think it's just personal preference. Yeah. Uh, also, lots of people are saying you did a great job. 
Thanks. And I love that. I actually like that y'all saw that I messed up because it's okay to use cheat sheets. Um, and this is, I keep all kinds of things on my phone because with quilting, I really don't. But with sewing, I cannot. Um, I'm just, I haven't done it enough. Okay. Uh, Tanya Anderson says, Kim, your shirt is so pretty. Is that from Nordstrom Trunk Club? If so, I would like to know who your stylist is, please. Oh, my stylist is, I don't know. I'll tell you next week, but it's not from there. When we went to Branson, Missouri with my daughter, there was not much to do. Um, and we had to stay really close to the convention center where she was dancing because she would like dance and then have a five hour break. So there was a little mall there. And so one day we went and she bought a couple things. And then the next day she was like, you know, I'm bored. Let me just buy you some clothes. This was like $15. I don't even know what store, um, but we just kind of went shopping and I got a couple of cute things at really good prices. Um, but she picked out all my clothes. <laughs> But I think, I think my stylist is Tiffany. And I mostly buy shoes from that, guys. I know that's horrible, but like I really like a good shoe. So most of the time I just buy shoes. And I'm thinking, why is she just, just send me some shoes? Okay. Uh, okay, Candy Kerr, this was a cute comment. She said, B plus, you get an A plus plus to show that mistakes happen, but you keep moving forward. Oh, I know. I'd be like, my, my curse word is biscuit. That's what I say. So, like, if I get mad, I'm like, biscuit! That's my curse word. Like so, it. if you ever hear biscuit, that's, like, my... My kids are always like, why are you saying biscuit? I'm like, because I messed up, or whatever. That's my little word that I say, biscuit. I got it from Denise, too. Because she says... So, I'm like, biscuit! I should have a dog named Biscuit. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then, just a suggestion from Pat Giacomin. She says, I suggest if you are used to making a bag, make one without your cross stitch first, yes. then make a second with cross stitch because you can't have too many bags. Yes, that's totally true. And that's the back. You can make it totally flat. Um, and if you want, one of the things that I did when I first started working with the Ada, I wasn't sure how it would stitch in the machine. So I just used a little tiny piece on the edge on my very first project, which was my other bag. Um, Denise, do you want to bring that bag and then I can throw it in there? Um, but on that bag, I had never s sewn with Ada. And so I did a little practice stitch because I just wanted to make sure that my machine didn't tear up the cloth. That's all the okay, awesome. So now I'm going to show you like stuff. I'm working, I'm going to move this machine just because it's in my way. So I'm just going to show you a bunch of stuff we have. So again, this is the pattern that you'll get if you download. It's just a free little download so you can turn it into a bag. So we've got that. This is Deborah's piece. So maybe she'll finish it into a bag. I don't know. I haven't asked her if she's going to finish it into a bag. If she does, I'll show it to you. So we've got that. This is um, in addition to all the finishes I showed you at the beginning, which was my Jolly July, this is what else I'm working on. This is Patchwork Halloween by Jardin Prive. And I'm using the 25 count Lugana by Lori Holt. And I spent about two and a half hours from last week, and so I've got this part done. And I am going to do a video. Yeah. I'm going to do a video sorry, on, on this, and I'm going to turn this into a project for my house, and it's going to be sewing, and I'll do a video on this also, but it's really nice and soft, and it's my first time stitching over two, but I think I might be done next week. Um, all it has is the border, and on the border, it's green, and I do not like green. Um, green is not my color of my house, so I might try to do a light gray border or a dark gray border or an orange border but I'm definitely not doing a green border so next week I should have that done and I have just been storing it this is horrible I've been storing it like this so that's that this is the other bag that they were talking about so this is the first time I ever stitched Ada into a project. So with this one, I can stick this in here. 
or this is kind of my Jolly July stuff. Stick that in there. And so this is called the Whip Bag. This video is on the quilting channel, which is Fat Quarter Shop regular quilting channel. It's a full tutorial on how to make that. This one is Kathy Haberman by Hands on Design. This is her pattern in conjunction with So Much to Love, I believe. And I did a little video to just show how I did it um, with all of their measurements. And I think it's really cute. So now I've got three bags. I need more bags, don't you know? You could put the small one in the medium one and then both of those inside the big one. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Yes. And so these are our these are our sleds, and we had some questions, so I was gonna talk through. These are just brown sleds, and we've gotten a lot of questions on how many come in a package, and we're just selling them singly, singularly. So if you buy one, you get one sled. But we basically what Denise did is she spray painted it and then it was kind of pinkish. So then we on the wooden part, which is just this part, we painted it with the dry brush and um, no, no water or anything. And we um, put picket fence on it, which is a Lori color. So that's kind of what we did. We've gotten a lot of questions. So I kind of wanted to clarify that a little bit. These are other things. This is Autumn Whirly. Whirly, Whirly Gig by Cheryl. And here, I'll let you zoom in here. She stitched on 32 count vintage country mocha and she used the called for classic color works and DMC. And you can see her, she used the called for colors, but it looks a little bit different on the printing. And this is how the pack, the fabric comes packaged. So Cheryl finished that. This is Farmhouse Bird by Heart and Hand. And she stitched on 32 count Mushroom Lugana. We have the 32 count. We don't have the, we have the 28 count, not the 32 count. And she used classic color works and DMC called for. I like the font. Super cute, and it's got like a little quilt on the bird. And this is the fabric that we have. This is the mushroom color. And then our Wichelt Club just shipped. So it, in that club, you can either get Ada, which is here, or lambs, or linen. Both colors are lamb's wool, and you can see they look a little bit different just because, I guess, the dyeing process and so that just shipped out. And one thing that I'm gonna be doing is showing you what you can make on it each month. So this is one of my Mania starts, and I'm gonna finish this soon. And I stitched this on lamb's wool. And throughout the year, I'm in the club. Throughout the year, I am going to show you what you can stitch and give you ideas on what to use so that Sorry. It was funny. Just like, oh, I know. I have a lot of stuff. So I can show you just, you know, different ideas on what you can do with your cloth so that you actually use it because I don't want you to just get something and then just let it sit in your closet. Some other new things we have are Fall Festival by Country Cottage Needleworks. So it's got some houses, some little people, a tree. This one's going to be super popular. It's Bird in the Hand Autumn by Heart and Hand. This one is Tiny Modernist Rustic Summer Set. And so it's got three charts. One, two, three. I can't open it because it's got the chart inside. Needle and Thread by Heart and Hand. This one's a little bit older, but we had a request for the Bent Creek Thankful Owls. Summer Seascape by Country Cottage. And Patchwork Sheep. And then last week we had a request for the Bent Creek Nativity, so we got that. We also got Winter Warmth. People are asking to be zoomed Oh, sorry. In. No, you're good. It's easy I can to do that. Winter Warmth by Little Dove and then and her stuff is always super cute she's got a lot of stuff on Instagram if you see it stitched up it looks a million times better and then this is the new Stitcherhood Quaker Home 
And I will go ahead and lay these out so you can see them closer up now that we've zoomed in a little bit. This one comes with a little charm. So those are some new patterns that we have. And then we also got some new 25 count Lugana in different colors because, and actually it's totally selfish. I got them because I loved Lori so much. So this, and then we're just selling them in one yard cut. So we've got black, mushroom, opalescent, and this one has the sparkle. I'm, I can never get that sparkle on, um, I can never get it to show up on the film. Yeah, and this is similar to what Deborah stitched on because it's the same exact, actually it might be what she used. It might be the same exact thing. We have navy. Stormy Clouds. I'm going to take this one out because this one is beautiful. So you can really see that that movement. And then this one is Stormy Night. This is my favorite and Denise's favorite. Look at that. Really nice um, variegation. And then we have pewter. So we kind of were adding, and then we had some people call that wanted. So that's all of our new stuff. We also have some white Witchell in 18 count, natural light in 18 count, 16 count white, antique white 16 count, and ivory 16 count. So we had some requests for more 16 count and more 18 count Ada. So we bought that. So that's what I have this week for you guys. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Next week, what we will be doing is on Monday, we are going to go live with Lori Holt's brand new pattern. And we are gonna announce our sew along next week and we will have exactly what, all the placement of it. So we're gonna start, we're not gonna start stitching next week, we're just gonna kinda plan it out, have the thread packs, but if you already have Lori Holt's Aura Floss set, you don't need any new thread. You just need um, the cloth. She stitched hers on the 25 count Lugana, which is this product. So if you want that, you can go ahead and get that, and then her Happy Camper pattern will go live on Monday. So that's hers. And then on this also, one side is modeled and one side is plain. So that gives you some creative freedom also. Uh, here, uh, Gianna Gorsuch asking about when you were sewing, what stitch length do you recommend for stitching Ada to quilting fabric? So I just do like a 2.0. That's about what I do. Um, every machine is different though. You know, if you sewed on an Eversewn or a Bernina or a Juki, your 2.0 is never gonna be the same on each. So whatever I use for quilting or sewing, whatever my normal stitch is, that's what, I'm com that's what I do and it's worked great. Uh, and then we had some people asking if they could see close-ups of the cute bags you made. Sure. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Hey, I can reach it. Okay, this is the one, this is called Love My Stitching Bag. The designer is Hands On Design, Kathy Haberman, and this is her design right here that you stitch. And then she has within it another pattern called, it's part of the pattern that gives you the measurement for all of these. I just did mine flat instead of turning it right side out so there would be binding on it. And on the back of this bag, I used one inch cross hatch and the back has by Annie Soft and Stable so it's very nice and sturdy, it's not floppy. So that's that bag. This is my whip project bag. And so this one has vinyl here, just regular fabric, this has all my patterns, my fabric, 
and the back I also I'm pretty much a one inch cross hatch kind of girl this is also soft and stable and it's free pattern and then my other bag I will show you up close is of Denise's this is the one I just finished for Denise today this is the front I don't know where I put mine I gotta find it <laughs> Also, to clarify on the whip bag, there's not a pattern for it that no. you can like download. It's a video. It's a free video. So you just, I will show you step by step. Did you put it in a bag? I thought I did. Here it is. Oh, yay. So on the whip bag, it's a free tutorial, but there's not a written pattern. You just watch the whole video. Super easy great for beginners and this one doesn't have any complicated things you won't make any mistakes because you don't have to flip anything out it's very straightforward oh okay I'm not touching that anymore oh, what I don't know okay I'm done with that okay. <laughs> I don't know what I did but I think I missed it oh, yeah. I think I hit the wrong piece Uh, Julie Washburn says, any tips on cross stitching on linen? I'm trying to do the glitter house patterns on linen and my stitches never look right. I wish I would have started them on Ada now. Okay, so linen has, it's not even exactly. So if you want to do something that's more even, I would suggest a Lugana or an even weave. I have no experience with linen. I'm going to be totally honest. The Lugana has been great. I haven't had any issues with anything being uneven and I really wanted to try it because it's Lori's and I wanted to get a feel for it before we started the happy camper so long so I would actually have tips to be able to pass on to you and I've, it's been a breeze it's been easy I've had no problem so I would say do something that's a little bit more even um that would be my suggestion uh and Julie's second question was is Lugana like a linen or like Ada it's like a linen it's over two, but it is, I believe it is an even weave. Um, and then Deborah Gallet says, did Kimberly stitch over one or two on the Halloween piece on 25 count? Two, and I only use two threads. Some, you can use either two or three threads on that. I believe that Lori did three. I just used two, personal preference, just uh, stitch in the very bottom right corner, see what you like or you can stitch on the piece and then pull it out. I did, I will, okay, let's tell a little story. I tried to do over one, because I thought, let me be adventurous, let me try over one. Uh, no. I could not even get the stitches out. First of all, I had the wrong needle, because I was on vacation, but um, no. Kimberly and stitching over one, that's not gonna happen. I was like, oh, I can show something different, I can be original, yeah, no. <laughs> no, no to that. I can't, I just, my eyesight is not, there and I didn't have the right needle and uh, -uh. I can't I can't even see what where I stitched like literally like okay so this morning my funny story for today is I woke up and I couldn't find my glasses but the problem is if you can't find your glasses you can't see you can't find your glasses so I like took all the covers off the bed and was like okay they were like behind my dresser I had to get my kids to help me look and then Christopher said here's your glasses he had Emma's glasses oh. I didn't even realize that I put them on and I was like, oh my goodness. So it was like, literally, I was like, I might have to get Kevin up because if you have glasses, that's to see. And if you can't put your glasses on, you cannot see. I was like, I can't do a live stream because I won't be able to see. Oh yeah, it was, that was my funniness this morning. I mean, that happens every now and then, but not usually where I really can't find them. Okay, um, Angela Stoutenger says, can you use batting instead of soft and stable? You can, it's just not going to be as firm, and I like my bags firm. And then Sylvie Tacker says, can you ask Kimberly if she feels comfortable graduating from Ada? I'm impressed that she is venturing out to different fabrics. So I'm good with Lugana. I like it. Um, I think that I could probably do 28 count. Right now I'm on 25 count. I don't think I would be able to go smaller because of my eyesight. Um, if I ever got, I've been thinking about getting lens replacement and if I got that, I could totally try it. Um, but lens replacement is expensive, so I'm not gonna be getting that yet. 
And Candy Kerr is asking, what size needle did you use for the Lugana? 26. I just used what I had. Oh, and the one thing I will say, and I'm going to talk about this in so along, is I could not use the John James Petite 26. It did not work. So I used my Bowen 26. For some reason, the Petite needle was just really not working with being able to stitch in hand. So guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being totally patient. Sorry, I messed up. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. We're going to have a sew along and have a great week.